So what have you got for us? Well, I'll actually put this aside for now and we'll have a look at some Woodland Scenics products again this week. Perfect. All right. uh, so I've been playing around with some plaster rock molds. Yep. Because I really was excited to see what they were like to use. Yes. Uh, so if you guys are unfamiliar with it, uh, it's it's these um, silicon molds and um, they're flexible, um, kind of they have baking yeah. molds, sort of similar to this. And the idea is that you can pour your plaster in mm -hmm. and once it hardens, it's very easy to remove. All right. And the advantage of this is that you can make um, you know, rock castings over and over and over again quite yep. efficiently. Well, I guess you would want to make quite a few, wouldn't you? Yeah. Generally? And there's a there's lots of different varieties, and this is just one example. There's probably oh, fifteen or more yeah, different, quite a few different different rock yeah. molds available. Oh, so these are the long ones. There's also the short, yeah. stubby ones as well. Some big chunky ones. Yeah, it's all different kinds. Yes. These are shelf rock, but there's right. also ones that are like massive rock face, where it's almost like just one on the entire mold. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, and then so we're gonna have a look at these. Actually, this is one of my earlier attempts. Right. At doing these plaster molds oh, and right. um, nice getting. Texture. Yeah, it's, there's really a lot detailed, of detail. Actually. I'll see if, how close I can get that. So this is just bare plaster. And uh, we're going to have a look at making this a little bit more realistic. Uh, basically, Woodland Scenics does a, a quite a few different varieties of plaster. Yeah. Uh, this is the Super Strength. So this is what they recommend for um, plaster moldings. Yes. And uh, they there's probably about six different ones. And then they have information regarding uh, what you'd use it for. So not all plasters are created equal. Some are a lot lighter than others, and they're great for when you're covering large areas of terrain yep. where weight would be an issue. Yep. In this case, strength is the most important factor and maintaining that detail. So right. this is what they recommend for that. So this one's really dense. It looks dense. Yes. Yeah, this is looks particularly dense. It's quite heavy. It's very heavy. Yeah. Right. Okay. So one really easy way to make this come to life is yep. with um, earth colors. Yep. These are pigment paints, so they're quite thin and watered down. Yep. And uh, we'll just quickly demonstrate what it's like using those. I just have these little sample bottles here. And we're just going to paint these up very quickly and, and show you guys what the results will look like. So we've got burnt umber. Let's put it in this one. Well, so these are straight out of the bottle like this? Straight out of the bottle. So right. very, very so watery. It's like, it's like a wash. It's very liquid, isn't it? Very liquid. Probably could have used a good shake up. Beforehand. Beforehand. So what I'll do is when I open up the yellow ochre, okay, I'll actually do that first. Well, this way can that that a pigment. I guess it's got uh, the, the powdered pigments in it, which give it the um, a little bit of a grainy finish. That's right. That came out much smoother. Yes, right. so definitely had a good shake just, up. Just give it a bit of a mix of this one is actually yeah. pretty good too. And then okay. any kind of foam brush. I've just got these little foam brushes here. Yep. And it's really good to just spot the plaster. So you don't want to cover the whole thing. So you're just you, doing a random dab, are you? Yeah, random dabs. Yep. Leopard spotting is is sometimes what it's called too. Right. And because it's the wash is nice and thin, what yep. it will do is it will actually um, travel to all of the recesses uh, in the in the molding itself and highlight those areas. It'll highlight all of the textures. Yep. So that's I'm gonna say it's probably about 50% covered. Um, and then we'll do the same with this one too. And you could use different colored washes for different colored rocks, depending on the kind of geographic location that you're trying to recreate. So these could be like red rock if you're doing the desert, or they could be like a gray rock if you're doing like shale or something like that. Yep. Um, so that's about 50% with that one. That's, that's pretty quick, isn't it? Way. Yeah. It's very effective already. Yeah. It makes a big difference when you go from this uh, from the white to this uh, kind of yellowish, you know, creamy color. And that's, uh, I'll probably put that on the tray. tray. Yeah, actually. And, um, okay. This will add um, just a nice contrast. So we're only using two colors. You could use a lot of other colors for this. And I think it's the, the dark that really highlights it. But you want to put your light colors on first because yes. you can always make things darker. Yeah. But it's really hard to reverse that process if yeah, you've yeah, applied yeah. your darkest um, washes first. Yeah. Oh, because it's so transparent. So that's that one, and we'll try this one. And all the and the gravity will pull this into all of the really um, recessed areas on the molding. You can just keep adding until you're happy with the way it looks. It's really it's really, it's really effortless. 
quite therapeutic actually. It's quite That's therapeutic. Really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, we actually did a, a, a bigger set, mm. remember? And that was yeah. uh, similar process. The rock was already made at the time, you just did some painting. Yeah, that's right. Um, we sort of went through and demonstrated how to do a little diorama, that's and th right. this was one aspect right. of it. But yeah. I really want to do the mold myself and yeah, yeah, that's right. see how that performs. So there, oh, look at that. That's, so that's a really natural tone, isn't it? Very little effort, uh, very little time, um, and that's quite a big improvement over just bare, just bare um, plaster. Yeah, and you can keep on going, um, yes. but so that we won't be here all day. I think. Yeah, I think that pretty well demonstrates how effective that is yeah Definitely. yeah so Great. i'll just ask him um how heavy and brittle are these um these rocks really so i, I would define they're quite heavy and they feel also quite brittle yeah. at the same time so there's a good weight well, they, they are fairly brittle um and the brittleness will depend on what kind of plaster you That's use right. and how effectively you've mixed your plaster like the water um to plaster ratio right so to my knowledge, I think it's the more water you add, the weaker it is. Weaker but that could be that could be the opposite. I have to yeah. check. But uh, one one great way to sort of get randomization if you're stuck using the same rock mold over and over and over again. Yeah. So this is a big one. This is one that came out of a mold where it's pretty much just one Full. on the whole sheet. Yeah. And um, if if that if you're not happy with that, if if there's not enough randomization, you literally can break it apart, or you could drop it. From like a, a small height, and it comes and, and then let let a randomization um, happen. Yeah, let it happen, and that way you can you can get a lot more um, out of these molds by absolutely That's allowing good, them yeah. to become different shapes. It's still very crisp way it's come apart, so it doesn't doesn't just fall apart. That's right. So it's still got a, a rough edge, but it, it's still it's still easy to manipulate. Absolutely. But yeah. I would say treating it with the same level of care you treat a layout or a diorama, it's pretty durable. It would have yep. held up for quite a few years. Yep. Yeah. Well, I guess if you wanted this to last forever, you could probably coat it with something else, like yeah. mm. yeah. like, like an epoxy. Yes. So how would you normally glue this onto your um, your baits? Uh, you could use, um. so they, they do like a woodland scenics do a few different scenic glues. I'm not yep. entirely sure what would be the best one they'd recommend. Yep. You could even use plaster to help hold that in That's place. Right. You could, oh, yeah, you could sure. actually yeah. plaster that onto your layout. Yes. And there's, right. um, there's one called Moldesine plaster, and it comes in a big tub like this. Yep. And that's designed specifically as like a gap filler yep. um, on scenery terrain. So that's what I would do is I'd seal it in with mm -hmm. that around the outside. And then when that dries, I'd smooth it, um, sand it out. Yep. And yeah, cover it with vegetation. I think Definitely. that's probably how I'd go about it. Beautiful. That wow. shows how easy it's actually to do this. Sounds very yeah. complicated when you trying to explain yeah. it to someone, but in reality, it's actually really fast and easy to to produce a really good, um, really good result. It's just yeah, it's just a matter of mixing your plaster, waiting a few hours, popping yeah. it out, and then waiting overnight for it to dry. That's thoroughly. right. And then you can, you can, if you have a couple of these, you can almost have like that's an assembly line point. process going. That's right. There you go. See so all different sizes, shapes. I guess you just put it together like that and just fill in, fill in the gaps. That's yeah. right. And then yeah, they'll, nice. they'll work for all scales. I mean, depending on whether you want this to be just a, like a relatively small That's boulder right. or if you want it to be like that would be like a massive rock face That's and right. end gauge. Yeah. Yeah, true. That. Yeah. Absolutely. So they're not really scale Let's bring this up again here. Yeah. yeah. These do look really, really good. Yeah. Actually, now that they are finished. Because you compare that to the original yeah. one, just straight white. There's a massive difference.